What's going on, everybody? It's Patrick Dang here with the Parallax, your number one source for all things NFTs, Web3, and crypto. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about one of the hottest opportunities in the NFT gaming space, and that is Sandbox. Now, personally for me, I've invested quite a bit when it comes to buying sandbox assets. And I think it's going to be one of the biggest gaming NFT projects out there and has really one of the biggest potential. And as you know, if you've been following crypto alternative coins for a while now, you know the sandbox has been blowing up lately, right? So it was about six cents, six cents, six cents, seven cents. And then all of a sudden it went to $2 and then it had this huge spike all the way to $8 and 40 cents at the time of this recording. And what I really wanna do for this video is is kind of explain to you what the sandbox is, why I think it's great, why I personally invested into it, and really give you understanding on whether or not, you know, it's something you should look into. And you want to make sure you watch this video until the end, because if you are just getting into NFTs, or maybe you're new to the sandbox, you haven't heard of it quite yet, well, I'm going to get you all your questions answered in this video. Now, before we go ahead and get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you want to see more in-depth NFT videos like this. And let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing we got to start off with is what exactly is the sandbox? So according to the company itself, they say the sandbox is a virtual metaverse where players can build, own, and monetize their own virtual experiences. So what exactly does that mean? So if you think about Ready Player One, where everyone's hanging out in this metaverse and the Oasis, it's kind of like that, except everything is in, you know, voxel form. And voxel really just means it's like 2D pixel art, but 3D, right? So you see all these different squares, almost like Minecraft, but a little more upscaled and there's a lot more detail. So if we're on the sandbox website right now, you kind of get a feel of what it is. Well, it's gaming right so people can play video games you can create your own games you can just create spaces where people hang out maybe you can throw your own virtual concerts where maybe snoop dogg might be playing virtually and then you have an, a virtual audience listening to this concert all in the sandbox right think of it like a virtual world where people can build their own little universe inside this world so obviously they're gonna have a lot of big partners like snoop dogg the walking dead adidas dead mao atari so a lot of big brands who are partnering up to build worlds in this space so you might be thinking okay so it's this place where people come and play video games but how big could it really be really and so just to give you a glimpse of that, the Sandbox actually raised $93 million from investors led by SoftBank, which is one of the largest VCs in the entire world right now. So they raised a fresh 90 three million dollars to build this world out and that's nothing to sneeze at right this is like the budget for like a triple a game except it's a game that other people can build games in to kind of give you a deeper sense of like why sandbox is so special is that you see all these assets that you see on their website right whether it's a treasure chest a tractor these dragons these characters they are all actually Ownable. To explain this concept, essentially in the old world of gaming, let's say you're playing like World of Warcraft or League of Legends, right? When you spend real money to buy things in the game, or when you work in the game and you collect gold and you buy items in the game, those assets belong to that game. They don't really belong to you, right? You have an account with World of Warcraft, but you can't take out your items into the real world and sell it for money, right? Or if you try, you might get banned. The way the new world is working is that all the items that you have in the game, whether you earn them or you paid for them with real dollars well you can actually sell it for money legally and they actually encourage that so that means like when you're playing a game you buy all these items and you accrue all these things well you can actually make real money from it and that's the big shift whereas instead of a big company like riot games or blizzard owning all of your property and they actually collect all the money make all the money for themselves the players have the opportunity to make money as well and that's why this is so huge so when we're going to the marketplace of the sandbox what's, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see all these different characters right so you can see like these avatar characters like these gladiators, Firehead, the ultimate fighter, well, they're gonna cost money, right? And so if you look at the price, what is this? Like 12K for this one, 13K for this, 15K for this. So these are actually big numbers for digital assets, right? And so digital assets now become valuable because you can't just like copy and paste this. There's like either it's gonna be one out of three and that's all there is. There's suddenly scarcity for digital assets. Whereas before you can make a song and you can give it to everybody. Now it's because of cryptocurrencies and Ethereum and the sandbox coin. Well, you can actually create real scarcity. And if you look at who the partners are, well, let's say, you know, we have Snoop Dogg. So as you can see, Snoop Dogg has his own NFT within the sandbox. This is a, what is it, like a private party pass. So I'm guessing that Snoop Dogg is going to have a lot of concerts and parties and things like that in the sandbox world. So by having this pass, you're going to be able to go almost like a membership or a ticket, right? You see other companies getting into this, like let's say the Smurfs, right? Everybody knows who the Smurfs. So the Smurfs are creating these little avatars that you can probably play and put into your sandbox Care Bears as well. So basically, you know, you have all these different companies, whether it's a big brand or a small brand, they're creating 
assets for this digital world that people can buy, sell, make money from, and enjoy. Not only can you buy the assets to play within the game, you can actually buy land, right? So for a lot of people, this is a quite a new concept where if somebody creates a digital world, it's kind of like a continent or a country, right? And you can actually buy land in this world. You might be thinking, why would anybody buy virtual land? Like what's the value of buying this thing that somebody just made out of thin air? Well, this is the future, right? So if people are playing this game, and as you can see, like all these plots where you see like these little pictures, people actually bought land. We have Atari over here, Binance over here. We scroll a little deeper. We have, you know, all these individual like crypto people buying this land. The Bored Apes have this land. Literally, people are spending millions and millions of dollars to buy these pieces of land. And right now, the current market price for just like one little square right here, it's probably like 15K cheapest for that little square. So you imagine like how many little squares there are in this whole map. I don't really know. Maybe it's hundreds or thousands. I never counted it, but you can see that it's obviously like millions and millions of dollars put into virtual land that Sandbox can use to continue to develop this project and will increase as the proximity to another big brand, right? So let's say you want to be next to Atari. Atari bought this big piece of land over here. I don't know how many dot. It's like maybe like a hundred different pieces put together into one big block, right? If you are next to Atari, if they have like hundreds of thousands of people going into this land and you're next to them, well, you potentially have thousands of people who will get exposure to whatever it is you got going on. Maybe you got your own NFT brand. Maybe you're a gaming company and you just want that free exposure. Well, having that proximity is what you're paying for, right? So the closer you are to bigger brands, the more expensive the land is going to be. And the prices of these lands are going through the roof. So to buy some land, you can actually go on the website called OpenSea, which is like eBay for NFTs. And uh, you buy and sell stuff there. You can shop around and look for different pieces of land that you may want to buy. And so I remember just a few months ago, I was looking at this land when it was like 4K for the cheapest. And I was thinking about buying one, but I didn't because I was like, yeah, well, you know, it looks cool, but I don't really want to get into it. Turns out that was a big mistake because now it tripled in price in just like two months from then. So price of land, you know, it could increase, it could decrease depending on the popularity of the game. But you know, if you want to be investing in digital land, this is one place to definitely look at. So now that we understand like assets in the game, you understand the value of it, you understand, you know, why land is valuable and how big this game can actually be. Well, let's talk about the price of sand, okay? When we're looking at sand before, it was like 80 cents for a sand in uh, October. So obviously the price Prices of a coin will explode depending on the narrative. So the alpha for the game barely came out. So barely, you know, people are starting to play. It's not like a big thing yet. But the reason the price increases so much is because it's the hype, right? People buy into narrative. So as more news comes out and people say, oh, the Sandbox is coming out. Oh, it's going to be great. Snoop Dogg is partnering with Sandbox. The prices are continually going to increase based on the hype. It doesn't mean the project is worth that much. It just means that a lot of people are interested. It's just supply and demand economics. So obviously the price is going to pump, pumps even more, pumps even more because everyone's talking, you know, great things about the sandbox and it's going to be the next big thing, right? Could it correct and, you know, go down from here? Uh, possibly. It really just depends. If it was all narrative and all hype, of course, there's going to be a correction. It's going to dip down a bit and then maybe it's going to go back up if the sandbox does become a success in the future. Now, also, could it be possible that the sandbox just keeps going up because the narrative is so good and everybody wants to buy into it? Yeah, that could also be true as well. So price can go up and down. Nobody like really, really knows. So you have to do your own research to understand whether or not you want to invest into that. You could buy sand. You could buy land. You could also buy digital assets like playable characters in a game like Cyber Kongs, for example. I have a few of these. There's different ways to invest in the sandbox. And one more thing, if you do buy sand, you can actually stake it. And for people who don't know what staking is or DeFi is, all it really means is you buy some of their tokens and you just lock them up. And then, you know, every day they give you a percentage based on how much you locked up. It's almost like giving somebody money and you're getting interest back, right? And so you can actually do that by holding sandbox. So not only do you buy the asset, you wait for it to go up, but you can also earn interest on your sand as well. That's something to keep in mind if you do want to invest in sand, which is kind of like investing in the entire ecosystem of the sandbox. And of course, well, is sand going to be valuable in the future? It well, it depends. If this people actually use this world and they want to play the games and the currency in the game is sand, well, sand will increase in value. Now, if nobody wants to play the game and it's a complete flop, then nobody's going to want sand, right? So you have to determine whether or not this game is going to make it in the long run. But in my opinion, I do have some assets when it comes to the sandbox. I think it's going to be one of the biggest games coming out. Or oh, it is one of the biggest games in terms of how much funding it's getting. There are real brands that are actually building in this world. Not only are they building like digital avatars that you can use as characters, but they're building out the worlds, building out the games, going to build out assets, whether it's wearable clothes, weapons in the game that you can use, 
items that may be consumable or last forever. So there's so many ways to slice and dice it. You know, the sandbox literally is like a sandbox, right? Where people can create their own universe within their space and they make it really easy because, you know, it's like voxel art. It's not like you have to reinvent the wheel or reinvent graphics. You just get some artists and put the little squares together to create something amazing. That's why I think it's really great where the barrier to entry is really low. A lot of people are coming into it. There's a lot of hype around it, a lot of projects building around it. So it's really exciting when people come together to build something amazing. And so with that said, that's everything we have to cover when it comes to the sandbox. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this. And make sure you follow me on Twitter at Patrick Dang if you want the latest updates on NFTs and see what projects I'm interested in in real time. With that said, this is Patrick Dang with the Parallax and I'll see you guys in the next one.